Okay, on number one, it's more about figuring out what this table is saying. So for example, we see 6.4 means that 6.4% of employed people have depression. Uh, so this number could be up to 100% if 100% of the, the people, uh, employed people surveyed had depression. Uh, and then this unemployed is a different category. This is a different one. Each of these could be anywhere between zero and 100%. Um, so the basic point here is they're not percents of the same whole. The 6.4% is not part of the same whole that this 9.2% is. They're, it wouldn't make sense for them to add up to 100. Uh, for number two, when you're trying to set up an observational study, we don't have the option to randomly assign, so the best, next best thing we can do is randomly sample or randomly select. Um, and we, we want to do that if at all possible because that allows us to generalize our results to the population. Whatever results we do find, even if it's just a correlation, it allows us to generalize it to the, the population. So random selection is the, the key here to this question. Uh, and then somehow you need to contact the group that you do randomly select. And, and how do you get them, by the way? You might look at the mailboxes. Someone in uh, class, I think, mentioned that. That was a great idea. Uh, mailboxes, yearbooks, some way get a list of all students. Randomly select them. Contact them. Somehow you need to measure their depression score and measure their veggie intake, uh, just what they are currently doing, and then just put it into a spreadsheet, look for a correlation. Uh, on number three, when we're trying to conduct an experiment, again, random is the key, but here it's the random assignment. Uh, and I would also say if you get students who don't eat veggies, uh, it might be the most ethical thing to do because um, if, if you're asking a depressed student to stop eating veggies, uh, when you think that it is connected to mental health in some way, that could actually push them deeper and then you could potentially get into a, a very harmful outcome. Uh, so just for the safety of the students, it, it's probably better to start with ones who don't eat and then randomly assign half of them to start eating vegetables. Uh, then there's lots of problems with this, mostly the, that you can't generalize to everyone, um, and not even college students really, because our sample wasn't random. We had a, a convenient sample there. So it just starts to show some, some causal effect with students who are like the ones in our sample. Although the way that we measure the variables may have been way too simple for really understanding a, a complex issue like depression. Okay, um, so the idea of random sampling uh, does reduce the sampling error, but sampling error is something you're almost always going to have. Um, your sample is always going to be a little different than your population. The idea is with randomness, we make that, that um, difference as, as small as possible. Uh, in this case, when we're dealing with the online survey, uh, we've talked about these snap polls or voluntary response polls really don't tell us much at all. Uh, although the thing we do know is we know of the particular people who responded, we know how many gave each result. Uh, in specifically here, 20% of the 20,000 preferred pizza. So we can take 20% times 20,000 and get roughly about 4,000 of the ones who answered said they did like pizza. Seven, the key here in this question is to know, can you randomly assign to the treatment? So first you need to figure out what the treatment is. Then you ask, is it practical or ethical to assign to that treatment? So here, um, one's level of vision, um, and, and that would be in, in ethic, unethical to impair someone's vision, especially if it was permanently. Now you could potentially cover someone's eyes with a blindfold, um, but if we're really looking for a heightened sense of smell, we wouldn't expect that to kick into play uh, for probably quite some time. And, and at that point, it's probably impractical to get people who would voluntarily impair their vision for year or years. Um, gender is not, so this is the treatment here, gender is, is not practical to uh, assign someone to a gender and then force them to legitimately fully take on that gender. 
level of education of one's parents. So think about what we're doing here. We're randomly saying, okay, your parents have to get a PhD. Your parents have to get a master's degree. Your parents aren't allowed to go to college. This is doubly impractical because one, you can't tell people that. Two, it's already in the past um, and you can't change the past. Uh, here, attending a private versus a public. Um, so here we would be randomly getting a group of say 100 students and then saying 50 of them, okay, you have to attend a private college, you have to attend a, a public one. Uh, students probably would not be real excited about this. Parents would definitely not be on board with this uh, and the money involved uh, to do something like this would be very, uh, very impractical. So the key on this kind of question is, can you randomly assign to the treatment? Uh, placebo is a, a fake treatment. Uh, randomized comparative studies. So this was all chapter nine stuff. And that random is random assignment. So random sampling and random selection. Those two are the same thing. And those are referring to how we get people into our sample. Uh, specifically, this applies in observational studies more often. You very rarely have random sampling and random assignment in the same study, although it would be brilliant if you could do it. It would be very valuable information. Uh, it's just not not done very often. Uh, so random assignment, the whole purpose of it is that it balances the groups. So if we think about in terms of race, if we think in terms of math ability, uh, in terms of height, in terms of anything that could potentially be a lurking variable, the randomization is going to roughly more or less balance the groups on all those variables except for one. The treatment is going to be different. One group will get the treatment entirely. The other group uh, will not get the treatment at all. So if we do see a difference in the end, we know it's probably not because of math ability because they're roughly the same. We know it's probably not because of race because they're balanced on race. We know that it's probably not related to socioeconomic status because they're balanced on that. The only thing they're not balanced on is whether or not they got the treatment. So if we see a difference in outcome, then it's probably because of the treatment or potentially random chance, uh, which is what we'll talk about in the second half of the course. Um, but the whole point of the random assignment is to balance the groups. And then in number 10, uh, we have a normally distributed set of information here. So we take our specific X score of 14 miles per gallon subtract the population mean, divide by the population standard deviation. This will give us a z-score. So we know we're 1.09 standard deviations below the mean. This, this uh, phantom is a little over one standard deviation below the mean. Uh, and at this point, we just look up the negative 1.09 in the chart. The chart table A always gives us the percentage to the left of that given z-score. So that would be right here. And that's exactly what we want because we want what percent have a lower gas mileage. Uh, and so here are the cars that have that lower gas mileage, 13.79%.